fucking bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches. Help keep our channel ad free by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here with another 40k retro flashback. Today we're going to talk about Captain Leonidas in the Blood Quest. It's a, it was a fantastic kind of uh, comic series for Warhammer Monthly back in the late 90s and uh, early 2000s. Actually, I'm not even sure it went past the early uh, year 2000, to be quite honest. It might have. Uh, <laughs> time flows differently when you look back on it, I guess. It was a it was a really cool series. Um, it introduced a lot of uh, new characters from uh, the Blood Angels line and some new fluff, like the Blade and Carmine was this really cool blade that basically was um, I forget his name, but basically the next chapter master of the Blood Angels in line after Sanguinis defended uh, the sea, you know the Gates of Terra, the Primaris Gate, and all that with this blade. It was called the Blade and Carmine, and I think he actually fought. Um, again, so uh, one of the bloodthirsters, one of the four named bloodthirsters that were there at the time. But, you know, he, uh, he survived the battle. Sanguinus obviously didn't and uh, went on to become chapter master. Well, anyways, it's a relic for the, uh, for the blood angels and, uh, Captain Leonidas lost it fighting, <laughs> fighting no orcs. And of course it wasn't just any orcs. It was some chaos possessed orcs. So they took it back to the eye of the terror and they're like, Hey, we got your sword. Come get it. And he's like, all right, well, I got, I got an honor guard. We're going to do this. And they go into eye of terror looking for it. It's like a, a whole like series. I mean, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a trade paperback. Basically, I don't know, like ten issues or whatever. But Warhammer Monthly was structured where there was uh, four different comic strips inside of it, and so it was really strung out over like a number of years, actually, instead of just like maybe six months. What it, what it could have been if it come out uh, separate issues. But Warhammer Monthly was a great comic series. I really wish they did something like that again with these uh, these short stories and things. But basically, that was kind of the springboard for Black Library, if you think about it. it a lot of that storytelling and they kind of got organized there towards the end of the 90s and a lot of those uh, authors like Dan Abnett you know did the Dictatio the Warlord Titan series and um, there was some uh, Mordheim stuff there was uh, the Blood Quest series of course so there was a lot of um, a lot of really good stuff in here but one of the things that was cool uh, at the time was that Black Library did a, a limited edition figure of Captain Leonidas here so I wanted to show you a few different things. So first off, here's the, here's the strip here. You know, it's all black and white art. You know, pretty much standard 1990s uh, comic fare right here. It's a great it's a great series. If you can find this on eBay, I'm sure they don't go for much these days. If you find the original, you, you don't really want to buy all the comic series because, like I said, you only get like a quarter of the comic is actually or a quarter of the issue is actually devoted to this. So buying the trade paperback or like the hardcover, if you can find it out there, it's pretty good. Um, I'm not sure who did the art here. I guess Colin Colin McNeil or Gordon Rennie. I'm not really sure, but the art was pretty decent. I mean, it wasn't a, it was just, you know, your standard uh, 1990s art here, but it told a really good story and it was uh, one of my favorites. And actually, I think the uh, 2000, I want to say the 2000 Golden Demon winner, Bobby Wong, painted up a really great, um, version of the limited edition Captain Leonidas figure, which I don't have the figure, but I do have the uh, certificate of ownership, so I definitely owned it at one point, right? Uh, and the uh, special edition um, rules for him here, which is really cool because back in the day you could only take like one relic, um, and he could like use the blade and Carmine. This was, was of course before he lost it and went on his blood quest, so to speak, into the Ayaterra to try to reclaim it and bring it back to the uh, to the chapter. So he's got a couple of different rules, you know, not, not a whole lot of things that pertain to 40k 7th edition today, because remember this was basically 40k 3rd edition, but uh, yeah, the Iron Halo, I'm sure we can all relate to that. The Blaine and Carmine actually ignored all armor saves, which was pretty cool. He had the Honor Guard, which generally um, consists of Cloten, Tenaris, uh, Valorus, Palermon, Lysander, can't say that name, and Proteus. And another cool thing about all this is in the 4th edition, uh, 40k rule book here you can see where someone actually made all of the figures now this is the this is just the normal space marine captain this isn't the limited edition figure hopefully i've already flashed up a uh, 
a picture of it, found it on Google, but I'm not sure if I'll even be able to find it because this stuff's kind of so old. But he was basically standing on some steps, kind of putting a sword in the air. Really cool looking. Maybe I could find the, Bo the Bobby Wong um, uh, Golden Demon winner. I actually, I think he won the Slayer Sword that year with it. And that was the year that uh, he used Vallejo paints, believe it or not. And that was like a big thing. Like, no, like Vallejo was just breaking into the miniature scene and he used those paints. And everybody was like, oh my God, what paints did you use? The pigments are so fresh. And everybody literally lost their minds, figured out what he had used because he won a couple more Golden Demons, I think doing some Ultramarines and stuff after that. And that was actually the springboard for Vallejo to break into the tabletop miniatures market. Because back then, we all we had was the Citadel miniatures. You go to Walmart and use your Apple Barrel paints, which, let's face it, aren't the greatest. You do get a lot of them, but they're not, they're not that great. <laughs> they're great for beginners. But, you know, that, so there was, there's so many different angles here for this Captain Leonidas thing. Like, it's just so weird how uh, everything's always so interconnected, it seems like, in our hobby. Well, anyways, like I said, 4th edition rulebook, this came out fall 2004. Um, so, obviously, Blood Class was still fresh in a lot of people's um, uh, minds, you know what I mean? So, somebody converted up a kill team. Uh, to represent a lot of the well these are more of the main characters like he had a full honor guard a lot of the guys died and fell off the librarian he, he didn't make it dog he didn't get it to bad boys uh bad boys three and four but uh cloten uh obviously uh definitely a big figure in the whole saga uh torino lysander proteus and palamaron so these guys actually were some of the bigger characters in the in the series so it makes sense that that somebody actually converted them up in uh, and these actually look like the guys if you look um you know if you if you actually look in the the comic strip itself these uh, definitely resemble they did a lot of work there you know with the hair and shaving down things and a couple a couple of things they didn't have to do they're already pretty good but i'm you know seeing this stuff and just you know it really brings back memories because like the whole black library uh, limited edition diorama thing, you know, that was really cool where you could send in, you basically send in a proof of purchase and they sent you back limited edition figures. Sometimes they are dioramas, like there was all sorts of different neat stuff back then. The Skulls program was popping off right around this time. You know, you could save up your, your mail order stickers and then turn them in kind of like a Subway sub back in the day. You know, now I think it's all digital. I don't even know, I don't even know anymore. I can't keep a wee kid. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's uh, it's just really cool to see where, where the hobby came from and kind of where it's going and you start to see the stuff come full circle and I really wouldn't be surprised if we see some you know we see these exclusives all the time and things like that and but it really wouldn't surprise me if there was actually something with a little bit more uh, teeth to it you know kind of like a mail-in or a send-in or you do this or you fill out this card at your local game store and then blah 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 you get this this and that or something like that you know that would be really cool to see and I could see Games Workshop you know, they're building a foundation this year in 2016 to uh, kind of get a lot more people into the hobby and get that organized play straight. You know, they're doing FAQs. And then, you know, I could really see 2017 being more promotions for them. Like, hey, how do we promote? How do we retain the people we have now? And et cetera, moving forward. So it's definitely a very exciting time for the hobby in general. And it's really cool to look back and see how exciting the hobby was in the past and just really kind of, um, you know, compare and contrast the, the two together. And I think I think it's really starting to become just as exciting as it was in the past. So that's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed my retro 40K flashback on Captain Leonidas and the Blood Quest. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. TheLongWord.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.